As I've covered and talked about Skylanders lore, I've kind of developed a little process for making these videos. Pick the topic, pick the Skylander, do some research, write the script, read the script, get the gameplay footage, get the portal animations, make the thumbnail, add the end scream, and bada bing bada boom, I'm pretty much done. After making the Ape Skylanders video, I wanted to take a look at some of the robot Skylanders, and as I was doing research into them, I began to realize that I had a pretty big problem on my hands. There are so many of them that I literally had no idea what to talk about. Because of this, I decided to try and do something a little different. Ask my community who they think the best and worst robot Skylanders are. And I got a lot of suggestions, and as time went on, a lot of people were talking about the same Skylanders as the best, along with the same thing for the worst. And funnily enough, one of these comments actually has a lot of Skylanders that I own on it. And because of that, and the times that the members of said comment have been brought up in others, I'd say that these three are pretty well liked. So today we're going to go over some of the best robot Skylanders mentioned in the comment section of my post. So without further ado, let's get started! Now when it comes to Skylanders games as a whole, I think that Magna Charge is the most broken character that I have ever touched that doesn't involve a glitch, and the biggest reason why I think this way is his kit. Basically, his first attack is him shooting energy projectiles before his weapon overheats after firing for too long. But if you fully upgrade the magnetic armament path, his cooldown basically turns into a buildup for a fireball that you can basically mash forever. And if you're thinking about the other path that upgrades his second attack, I kinda see it as pointless because his second attack is already broken when it gets to that point. It not only allows you to pick up enemies and stop them from attacking you, but it also allows you to throw enemies, which can either hit other enemies or launch them wherever. Like off a cliff. Then things get even more crazy when you account for his bottom half, which not only functions as a dash, but can also pick up and throw up to two enemies at once. Literally the only threats to him are the bigger enemies, bosses, and the spell punks, because they're the only ones I've encountered so far that can't be picked up and tossed into the abyss. I also found these pretty cool looking concept arts for Magna Charge in the Art of Skylander Swap Force book, but with that out the way, let's actually take a look at his backstory and see what we can learn about him. Magna Charge hails from the great race of Ultron robots, and unlike the rest of his kin, he was mysteriously created with a massive head, which was a huge problem because his head was magnetic and the other robots were, well, robots, so they were constantly being pulled towards him. Because of this, the other Ultrons exiled him away to a faraway island, and after years of training alone on the island, he would return to his home to demonstrate his abilities only to find nothing but destruction. He would leave what was left of his home behind and venture out into Skyland seeking answers, and after roaming for some time, he would catch the attention of Eon, and realizing how useful he would be, he would make him a Skylander of the Swap Force. Now, the biggest thing that I notice about the Ultron robots is that they're called a species in Magna Charge's bio, and not something else like a series. So I did a little bit of digging into these Ultrons as a whole, and I found this enemy type that goes by the same name, and interestingly enough, it's an Archean robot but it's pretty obvious that these two robots probably have nothing to do with each other. Remember, the only difference that's stated between him and the other Ultrons is his head, and to our knowledge, he didn't swap out or change his parts at all. So these two types of robots have to be separate. There's also the question of what happened to the Ultrons. We just know so little about Magna Charge's species that I can't really figure out who or why someone would want to attack them. And speaking of the species, how does that exactly work for robots. Does it mean that they were manufactured like a series of robots, or were they built by each other? And if that's the case, then why? Do they have a purpose or reason why they are doing what they're doing, or are they just hanging out? But from what I could find, I can't really find any answers on that, so it's just gonna be a cold case for now. So with that out the way, let's get into the next Skylander of today. When it comes to Robot Skylanders, Windup is one of the ones I've owned, but as of writing this, it's been a long time since I played him, and because of that, I was pretty interested to see that he was one of the top picks. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, he has one of the most unique designs out of all the robots, which makes it even funnier that he is one of, if not the most cursed Skylander I have seen so far when it comes to concept art. But that aside, after playing with him for a little bit, I can definitely see why he's considered one of the best. He not only increases the speed for everything the more you wind him up, but he can also lock onto enemies without you having to do anything and launch them into the air with his spring attack, which is more or less very broken if you know how to use it. 
even with the windup acting as a nerf that doesn't exactly nerf. But with that said and done, let's take a look at his backstory. Windup was built in a workshop of a toy maker who was obsessed with time, and the reason he was created was to keep the massive collection of complicated clocks working as best they could. One day, the toy maker would try to put his hot cocoa in an Archean oven, which would somehow cause a freak accident that literally blipped him out of existence. If you think I'm screwing with you, I am not. A toy maker was canonically written out of reality by an oven. This would leave Windup alone in the Enchanted Workshop, where he found himself surrounded by an invading Cyclops platoon, who were planning to take the secrets of the former toy maker for themselves. Using his split-second timing, clockwork strategy, and his wound-up energy, he would spring into action and defend the workshop and handily defeat them. And probably seeing nothing for himself at the workshop anymore, he would go to the Skylanders and join them, where he would now put his coiled energy to good use. Now, the biggest and most obvious thing to discuss about the story is the fact that a goddamn oven erased someone from reality. The way that it's said exactly in the backstory is, quote, But when the toy maker popped out of existence in a freak accident caused by putting hot cocoa in a cross-wired Archean oven. Now, what makes this whole thing interesting is the fact that Windup was immediately attacked afterwards, or that's at least what I'm getting from the story. And I think that paints a good picture on what exactly happened. It's never said in the story how or why the toy maker had the arcane oven, and since it was crosswired, maybe somebody was trying to kill him with it, and that someone was probably the Cyclopses. How could there be a toy maker to stop them from stealing his secrets if there's no toy man to stop them? An oven warping people out of reality instead of not working or exploding is something that I'm guessing you have to cause to some degree, unless the Archeans were using the fabric of reality to heat their food, which I kinda doubt. The only group that really benefits from that outcome is the Cyclopses, but that's betting on the Cyclopses knowing what they're doing, and this being a complete accident isn't exactly out of the question. The Toymaker was obsessed with clocks, so he could have easily taken parts out of it for his clocks, or he tried to fix it or modify it on his own and accidentally messed something up and the rest is history. I mean, the Archeans using space-time to cook their food isn't that far of a stretch, but as I'm looking at it, either one of the things I presented could be the case. But with that out the way, let's touch upon the final Skylander of today. Literally. Come shoot and shoot! Now, when it comes to all the robots that I've seen or talked about on the channel, I think that this guy right here has to be the one that surprised me the most. Robo is not only a robot, but he's also the last Skylander to ever be released, him being the last figure to end up on shelves in the fall of 2017 if you exclude Buckshot. But everything surrounding Buckshot is a little confusing as he's in the files and is pretty much complete, but for some reason he never ended up on shelves. It's actually pretty interesting that Robo was the final Skylander to end up on shelves since he just looks so different from the other robot Skylanders I've covered. His gunmetal gray body and green hood just make him look so unique compared to everyone else in the tech element, at least when it comes to colors. He also looks like he comes from medieval times, which is another bonus for him. But with that out of the way, let's take a look at his backstory and see what led him to the Skylanders. Nobody exactly knows who or what built Robo, as there is no record of the thing that created him at all. Not even Robo knows who his creator is, as the moment his basic functions kicked in and brought him online, his creator was nowhere to be found. Because of this, Robo would search far and wide across Skylands in an attempt to find him. But since his programming was incomplete, he wasn't able to communicate with anyone in Skylands, which made his search for his creator even harder. Eventually, Robo would stumble upon an old lair that had once belonged to Chaos, and while he was exploring its remains, he would manage to make his way to and enter the Matter Refractoring Room where he would find a strange device. It isn't said what this device was, but Robo was able to access it and download a staggering amount of information from it, which not only included a lot of information on Chaos itself, but would also give him the ability to speak, but in a strange way, along with the knowledge to shoot driller arrows. When he learned about Chaos from the device, he decided that he had a new purpose, to seek out Eon and help him fight evil. When Robo eventually found him, Eon realized that he was the perfect sensei for the Bowslingers, and he would make Robo a sensei on the spot. Now, when it comes to Robo's backstory, it's not only really good, but it's also a fantastic final story. I don't know why, but it reminds me of some of the best backstories I've read so far on the channel, and I think it's a good Skylander to end off on. But there's a couple of things I want to talk about. Like his creator. Even though whatever built him isn't even known to anyone in Skylands, it's still such a fascinating idea. 
His creator could be literally anything possible, and because of this, I thought his creator was an alien. Don't worry, I wasn't going to relate it back to Star Striker Star Cast, but the reason I thought that way is because of his design. Like I said before, his design is so far out there compared to other robots that it kind of would make sense, and it's also helped by the fact that nobody knew what created him. But I will admit there's also evidence for the contrary. He has the ability to interact with Skylands technology, so it would make more sense that he was a robot that was either left incomplete or was completely scrapped by his creator. And speaking of his voice, after taking a look at some of his dialogue, I realized that a lot of the stuff is gamer slang. So does that mean that Chaos plays or at least played video games at one point in his life? I mean, from a lot of the language I'm seeing, it kind of suggests that. Which also suggests to me that whatever Robo picked up was Chaos's hard drive. And considering the fact that Robo immediately went to seek out Eon after seeing what was in it about Chaos, I'd rather not have a look. But with that out the way, I think this is where I'm gonna end things off. I know this sounds pretty rusty, especially since I got back from break, but with that out the way, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Like always, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy content like this, share this around so I can grow the channel, leave some comments down below to make the algorithm happy, and I will see you all in the next one.